Let me extend it. Mm.
was that name doing to everyone? Hello. Good morning, everyone here. We will welcome you to this Odell online orientation for the faculty of agriculture, environmental science and technology, plus the faculty of nursing. You are welcome. Uh, this orientation is to, to show you or to teach you how you can go to VLE, which is a virtual learning environment. It's an online platform that uh, BSU as a university is using uh, to teach students. Uh, I have my colleagues around me that uh, uh, we shall be discussing uh, different uh, things. I have Mr. Aine Mark is around. I have Mr. Chibu Kostos. That's the whole computer science. We also have the deputy academic registrar, that is Madame Jacqueline. Uh, Odell is an open distance and electronic learning. And uh, we, as uh, the BSU University, we have a learning management system that we shall be using, that lecturers I will be using to teach students. And a student to access the system, you must have the account. You must have an account that will enable you to log into the system and you access all the information. For example, uh, I will just uh, share my screen here. I'll just share my screen. As I told you at first that you must have an account. There are some of you uh, who left their details behind when you went to a lockdown. You registered on the paper. We asked you to put your reg number, your full names, and then the contact. And we told you that your reg number in capital letters without slashes will be your username. And the phone contact that you registered on the paper will be your password. Some of you have been reaching us, sending us the messages on our different platforms, uh, requesting us to help you in creating accounts. So if you send the details with the phone number, then you know your phone number is your password. There are some who sent uh, the details but do not include their contacts. If you know you do not include your contacts, then your password is your reg number in capital letters without slashes. So I'm going to take you through on how do you go or how, uh, uh, how do you go to the VLE. To go to VLE, you must have uh, a browser. You all know browsers that allow us to connect and have information. For example, if you have like your smartphone, you can use uh, Opera, we have Chrome, and then if you have uh, your laptop, there is Internet Explorer, there are so many. So what you do, you just open the browser, you just open your browser, hope you are seeing my screen, I've opened my browser. This is Mozilla Firefox. You come here under the URL and you type the link or what you can call the website, which is vle.bsu.ac.ug. So you enter this. VLE, it is in small letters, vle.bsu.ac.ug, and then you press go or enter. So when you press enter, it will take you to this page, whereby you'll be able to see the business block and then the BSC logo on the left, 
And then on the top right corner, we have login. So what we do here, you will come and click login. Let's click login and see what will happen. It will again take us to another page. This is where you put your username and your password. For example, I have a student here. And the rig number is 19 stroke BSU stroke BIT 000. But I said on your username, you don't put slashes. So this student will come here and put 19 BSU BIT 000. And then the password is the phone number that he registered with us. Some of you just put any phone number. It will not work. That phone number has to be entered in our system. That's when you'll be able to log in. So what you do here, you put your phone number that you registered with us, which is 07, for example, this student registered uh, this number. So after putting your credentials, which is your username and your password, you come and click log in. When you click log in, it will take you to your page. This is testing VRE. You'll be able to see your name here, where there is testing VRE. And then on the left corner, we have dashboard, we have site home, we have calendar, and we also have private files. On course overview, we have the timeline and the courses. At first point, you will not be able to see the course until you enroll. If you have not enrolled on any course unit, it will not appear on your home page. So, what do we do? What do we do after reaching at this point? Here, we are going to go and look the course unit that we are having. Are we together? For example, what we do here, you come and click on site home. It is on the top left corner. If you don't see site home, you will see uh, these three lines. So when you click on these lines, you will see the dashboard, site home, and the calendar, plus the private files. So what we do here, you click on site home. So when you click on site home, you need to scroll down. You scroll down, these are the different questions that are being taught at the university. But what you do here, you need to scroll down until you see the search courses. This is the search bar where you type in the course unit that you are being taught this semester. For example, this student is being taught network and information. You will come here and put network and information security. And then you click go. So when you click go, it will bring the search results. It will bring the course code, it will bring the course unit name and some description, and then down, it will also bring the course lecturer. So you can see here that the course unit code is BIT2102, and then the course unit is network and information security. This is a, a small bit of description. And then down here, we have the lecturer, who is Mr. Yorichel Abe. So what you do here, you again click on network and information security, and then it will bring enroll me. This is self-enrollment. Self-enrollment does not need you to, uh, does not need you to do anything apart from enrolling doesn't need you to put that enrollment key, just bring the enroll me. So what you do here, you click on enroll me. So when I click on enroll me, 
You see, I'll be able to see the content inside that course unit. For example, you can see this is a small bit of uh, uh, the course outline. And then uh, there is introduction. And then uh, we have assignment. Uh, these are the topics that are covered under that course unit. Uh, so when I log out here, let me, first, let me do refresh. When I refresh here and go back to dashboard, Under courses, under courses, I will have my course unit displayed. So that's one course unit. And that's one way how you can enroll to the course unit. And then there is a, a where you try to enroll and it asks you the enrollment key. Some of the lecturers uh, wish or wish to put the enrollment key so that they can uh, stop other members outside their class to enroll. For example, I have a course unit here. I have uh, a course unit. So I will go back to site home, scroll down, and search another course unit, which is internet and web programming. So I click go. It will bring the results. So I will look my class. I will just scroll and look my class. I have this one. I'm doing a DCS. This is the code and this is the course unit. So when I scroll there, it will ask me to put the enrollment key. So this enrollment key is good from the lecturer. When he changed the setting and put the enrollment key, you just give you the, the key. For example, uh, this lecturer used uh, a key D. This is the key that he used. So I'll just first type the key and click enroll me. So it will allow. So this is my second question that I have enrolled. When I go back to dashboard, when I go back to dashboard, we just do a refresh here. It is here, it is internet and web programming. So which means if I have a node on this course unit, I'll be able to access every information that is captured there. So what you do here, you just need to click on this course unit and you are able to see the content. As you can see, this is the introduction part of it. And then we have different different uh, topics. So when I want to uh, download the, these notes, I will need to click, for example, if I want to download forms, so I'll just click on forms, and then uh, it will just uh, take me to, you see, these are notes, they are loading. So from here, I'll be able to download the content under this course unit. That's one way how you can enroll to your course unit. I'm going to call upon my uh, colleague here, Mr. Aine Mark, to proceed from there. And at the end, we shall receive the question and give you uh, immediate feedback. Thank so you.
before I call upon my other colleague, I also need to share with you, uh, there are some questions where the enrollment ended and you no longer, it no longer allows you to enroll. For example, I have a question here. So I'll go back to dashboard and then click on site home and then scroll down, go to search courses and then I type uh, the course unit that I'm doing this semester, which is computer engineering. Computer engineering. And then after I will click go. So when I click go, it will bring the, the search results. These are three, but I will look my, my program. This is the course code I'm looking, BIT, 1990 computer engineering. Under such courses, you can also put a code. If you know a code, you can put a code, it will also bring the same results. So when I try to click and enroll on computer engineering, it will bring uh, this information. This is the course code, and then a course unit, we have the lecture here. And then this is self-enrollment by stu students. But you can see here, the message it is bringing. You cannot enroll anymore since enrollment enrollment ended on Monday, second November at this time. So what do you do after? When the enrollment ended, you need to contact your lecturer. Ask them, we cannot enroll ourselves. So the, the lecturer will go into the settings and change the enrollment date and set it to the day, the date that uh, can allow you to enroll. So when we go back to our dashboard, when we go back to our dashboard, as you can see here, we have other menus as as you can see, for example, if I scroll down, you will see the online users. People who are online right now to bring the results and you are able to tell. For example, you can see Mugabe Dixon is uh, online. You can see, can see Mimate, you can see Sonia, you can see Mark is also online. And then you also have the upcoming events. Now, here, when a lecture schedules are uh, an assignment, it will come under the upcoming event. So you'll be able to, to see which events, which upcoming events uh, are appearing on your homepage. For example, you can see assignments due to telling me that assignment is due tomorrow. So it is uh, asking you to actually participate and submit the assignment within uh, uh, that uh, time. And you can see there's even a calendar here. There is a calendar. And then we have the private files. Here you can uh, uh, put the, you can just uh, upload some of your private files. For example, you can upload the reading materials. So you just go to, just click on upload uh, private files. And then here you browse, this is a browse. Or you can, uh, you can drag and drop. For example, if you have a file on desktop, just drag it and drop here. Or you click on uh, add, add a file, and then you browse. Go your file will be captured here, and then you click save. These files uh, uh, will not be uh, accessible to everyone. It's you. It's you who will be able to see that information. But here they are telling us that the maximum size for the new file is 2 MB. So you can upload a file not uh, more than 2 
M B. We also have uh, the uh, the message icon here. It's a message icon. Togo message message menu. So when you click on it, there is a, a message. You can say add a new message. It brings text you to this page, and then here we have contacts. Search, you can even search for a user. If you are searching for your course, uh, course mate, just type the name or the uh, director, just put the name or you click on contacts. Or you click on contacts and then it will search the contacts that are saved. But you can see now there are no contacts that are saved. Okay, so that's uh, how you can uh, log into the VRE account and then uh, you enroll to your course units and then you are able to see the content that is appearing under that course unit. And then we also have another, I think uh, 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 we are going to teach you how we go about it live classes. I think that one will be the second uh, presentation. Uh, the second presentation, we shall uh, show you how you can do uh, a live class. If it is scheduled, how you can log into and then you attend to the class. I'm going to call upon uh, Mr. Christmas. Mr. Christmas, you're welcome. Hello, I hope you guys had a, a good, it's a good morning. I hope you had a good night. And uh, we are still uh, seeing how do we run a VLE class successfully. So Cohen has taken you through the logins and uh, how you enroll. So briefly, I'm going to talk about how do you participate? How do you get right participation in the class? So you're already seeing the shared VAE platform. And basically when you log in and you've enrolled, that's what you see, or well, that's how you would get it. So there is a course unit here, which is uh, testing VLE. And uh, the course is in progress. So first thing is uh, we check the status of the course. If you've enrolled, you check their courses which are in progress. What is at future are courses you yet to do. And what is in the past would be the courses that you have completed. So in this case, we have a course in progress, which is internet and web development. And then we have no course in future, but we have a course in past, which is network and information security. So let's go to course in progress. Now course in progress, that means that class you can attend, you've enrolled and um, you it is being examined or it's an examinable course. So the first thing is uh, you need to follow closely with the schedule of your lecturer. So with the schedule, I'm meaning the time you're supposed to actually be attending that class. So if the class is at eight, you keep the time of eight. So when it is at eight, you need to know which eight. Is it 8 a.m. or 8 p.m.? So usually we also advise that uh, if there is a member not called conversant with the time or cannot make the time when the class is scheduled, you need to tell your course leader or your lecturer that that time is tricky for you. However, you need to keep a close monitoring of your time schedules because the platform which we are using 
actually tracks your attendance. The moment you sign in, your, your attendance is taken care of. So I'm just going to show you briefly. On the right, on, on the right of the screen here, you see online users. Now, these are people who are currently signed in into VLE. So that means the moment you sign in, the system is capturing your login. So the capture of your login is equivalent to your attendance in class. Now that is one thing. The second thing is you can actually participate in class. So let's go to this course. Now the course opens and you can actually see the course name and the course code. Now, there are two things that you need to keep track of, whether you're attending the right course or you're not attending the right course. How do you know you're attending the right course? The first thing is the name of the course. So is the name of the course you're trying to attend? Is it internet and web programming? If it is a shared course, this name may not be the same as you have in the other class. If it is not the same, you need to look at the second identifier, which is the course code. So that's what I've highlighted, the course, the course code. So this course code should be giving you the right name. So when I mouse over the course code, you see the name still appears. So you enroll in a course using either the course code, which is this kind of code, or the course name, which I have highlighted there. Yeah, so now that we know how to identify the course, if this is the right course we are attending, then we can go to the features of the course. Now, the features for any course you're going to attend, it has announcements. These announcements can come from your class president or it can come from the course leader. Yes, so any message into the class will come, will pop up from the announcements. Then below the announcements, then you have the course outline. The course outline is might be set in modules or might be set per week. So per week you might have a topic to cover. So what you're looking at now is actually a set format per week. So in the first week, that means we can look at forms. The second week, we can look at domain names and web hosting. The third week, we can name at web hosting. Then the other one could be uh, HTML tables, flames, and forms. So basically, these are topics that can be covered per a week. However, if it is weekly or modular, then you can have several subtopics under forms. So you can have forms, and then you have subtopics. So I assume now we do understand. If there is anything you want to ask, please make sure you ask them in a, you text in the, in the SMS, in the, in the what, in the chat. So let's continue. So let's see how do you deal with an item in progress. So let's assume this is our first week and we are attending a topic called forms in our class. So when I go to forms and I click there, it, it, it has actually the content I'm supposed to be covering. So my lecturer has put the notes there of forms. Do you see the PowerPoint? So when I click on the PowerPoint, it can show me actually, it does show me the size. It is one megabyte and the type of program that is actually going to open this file. So first thing you do before you actually open is uh, check. This can be opened by a PowerPoint. Yeah, a spreadsheet, uh, sorry, a, a, a presentation. So make sure if you're using a phone or your computer, it has the program that is shown by the file. Yes. The, when you look up here, introduction to HTML has notes and the notes shows you this is one, K, one kilobyte and it is PDF document. So this is important to you to note so that you know which program do you need to open your file. So let's go back to the second week, which has forms. And they're telling me the top, the, the content is in a folder, in, in a file called forms and it's a PowerPoint presentation, which I already have. So when you click on it, this will have to open. You see that? And you have a choice either to open or to save. Now, this is when you're using a computer. With a phone, it will just go to open. And then once you open, you can decide whether to save it or not to save it. That's
the only difference, but that doesn't matter. But we do encourage you that whenever you open, you save so that you can refer to the content later. Are you together? So in this case, I'm just going to say save. So when I save, that means it will not be visible. It will be saved and kept on the PC. For example, if I do save, it saves it, but does not open it. But when I say, when I click there and I say open with PowerPoint, you see this program is the same as the program showed here. See that? If there are different programs, make sure the program you're opting for can actually open. So if it's not the right program, there is always a drop down. You can click there and select an other program that can open that file. But since this is the same, so just going to say open with and say okay. So the presentation will be able to open. Now, this kind of interaction is where you have a class you're attending to and the lecturer may not be engaging you live or what we call a passive engagement. So that means I set up my class if I'm the lecturer and I say this week you'll be able to access this content and once you access the content you can actually see this content through. Yes, you can see this content through. So what we are going to do is we are going to sample a live class right now. Yes, now I'm just going to stop sharing. Yeah, I've just stopped sharing and we are going to assume we are in class. It doesn't matter which course you do. Uh, so when we're in a live class, you may not be able to see me or you may be able to see my face. So let me just make sure. Okay. Okay, so I hope you can see my video. So you'll be able to see my video up on your screen and I'm going to share. So we are now starting the class. So what would happen is I would welcome you to the class. So you can allow me to say good morning class. And we are going to start with our second week course, which is called forms topic called forms in web and internet development. So the content is already available in your VLE and is in week two. So that is the second topic of the week. So I'm going just like what you have, I'm just going to share the screen and then we can go to the class. So just a moment as I share the screen. Uh, so that is our that is our content as you see it so this is what the lecturer would do for you so i found the lecturer right now this is the content so i can take you through the content yes now what usually happens on the other side for you students is you may not be able to know whether i'm using zoom whether i'm using big blue buttons or the app this will be able to display the way it is displaying on your side. So you don't have to worry whether you have you don't have Zoom or you have Zoom in a live class. This will be able to display in your VLE just like the way it is being displayed right now. So for now, we're just going to take a short review of actually what we've looked at. So I'm just going to stop sharing this and I'm going to share back the power, the, the, the VLE. So this is how our class platform was looking at like. So the first thing we did when I came here is uh, this is how your class looks like. So the class is testing VLE. Now testing VLE can just be like any other course you do. Maybe Bachelor of Information Technology, maybe Bachelor of Computer Science, Agribusiness or Business. So that's what it does. Then there is a course overview. Now in the course overview, you have courses that run. Yes, the course overview also has the timeline of that course. When are you supposed to submit? When you're supposed to do a test? When you're supposed to do an exam? In other words, um, a little apart from what you usually had in class, where the lecture will tell you two weeks, in two weeks you shall have a test. Here, you know, at the beginning of the class that you have a test on this stage so that you can sort out your timetables quite well. The courses are the courses that you would be offering under that program. And you have three features, the ones in progress, the courses in the future, and the courses in the past. And the courses in progress are the ones you're offering right then. Then the courses in the future are the ones you could offer later. 
because due to arrangement, you can say, okay, the courses are going to run for a week. Then the next month we shall have another course and the other week we shall have another course. So those courses will be happening in the future. Now the courses that are in the past are the ones you have completed. So when you complete a course or the time when the course expires, then that course is put in your past. So if you've done 16 courses in your, in your progress, maybe 16 courses, that means that is in second year. So you'd be able to see all those courses you did and how you performed them, yes? Then the courses in progress are the ones currently you are offering. So we said uh, you select the course you're doing right at that time. So you select, you just click there and you'll be able to see the courses. So on the right, there are interactions. On the left, there are interactions, yes? On, in the middle, the middle novel, you have the, the class and its progress, yes? And on the far right, you can actually have things you're customizing your course with or settings. So for example, participants here, you can see people who are participating. And right now, the only one giving the class, so there are no participants, yes? But that's what it does. So you can also enlarge so that you can see your course quite vividly. So let's just go back a little here. Yeah, so and they're saying this represents the topics you are offer you're sorry doing under that course. And under it they are contents. Are you together? So you also if you don't understand anything, you can put it to the lecture. You can ask questions. Then their assignments can be there, and then there are other dates that can can follow in. So if I have another class on third April, I would just click there and then add a new class. So third April will not appear, but the course name will appear that you're supposed to open that date. Now the dates here are automatically fed from the system. So that's why we say each topic here is represented in the week period it's supposed to be offered. Yeah, thank you very much. So we are now going to attend to some questions. I'm just going to stop sharing and then we go to the to the, to the questions and uh, just a moment as I go through to see some questions. So I don't see any questions in the text, but however you can you you can you can text you can. Please feel free to ask you. I, I see hands up, so just text. You can unmute and and ask. I can see Patrick. Please ask your question. I can see Patrick. Hello, Patrick. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can hear you. Hello? Patrick, yeah, his mic is in Benjamin, you can unmute your mic and ask if you have a question. Because I see your hands up. And uh, Patrick, if you want to talk to us, please make sure your, your volume is up because we can't hear you. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, Benjamin, you're Hello. here to talk. Yes, Mr. Cohen, thank you for your good presentation. Uh, but what I would like to inquire from you, uh, how are people in those remote areas where the network is uh, poor? Uh, what, what, uh, what plans do you have for those people? Thank you, sir. Sorry, can you repeat that question? Uh, 
Are you there? Are you there? Yes, I'm there. Hello? Yes, can you give us your question? Yes, can you give us your question? Uh, my, question your question. Was, my question was, my question is, uh, uh, when you are downloading the content, sometimes they it comes with only the links and it doesn't give you the clear content. I would like you to highlight us on that. Then the other thing, is was also even me i'm worried about you some of us who are in areas with poor network how shall we able to to access this online learning thank you the take on that is uh i'll, I'll start with the last one uh you there is uh, nothing we can do about the network. However, there are ways you can actually make sure that Your sound was broken down. We also have Margaret. Please, if you have a question, feel free to unmute and ask. Benjamin. Hello, Mr. Cohen. We can get you, please. Hello. Continue. Are you getting me? You are clear. We can hear you. Just continue. Okay, Mr. Thank you, sir. Um, I just needed clarity on um, how uh, will exams be done. Shall we do them here or like, I don't know how we shall do them. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the question. Now, let me give you a very brief straight answer. Now, for, the, for now, the exams will be done physically. So you, uh, you receive a timetable and a time schedule when you're supposed to come and sit for your exams. However, the continuous assessment will be done on VLE. Yes, for example, coursework and projects. Now, for the other category you're not asking is uh, how would practicals be done? Now, if a class has practicals where you, which cannot be simulated, which you need a lab or interaction with the specimen or, or a task, you, you're given a schedule or you agree with your lecturer when to have that practical. So that means because the program is open distance and electronic learning, open distance, that means you can come, but you're not always here to study. So you can come on a particular purpose in a particular schedule given to your class or as agreed by your lecturer to have that activity done. Now that gives you time to prepare for the activity. It also gives you time for your lecturer to prepare for you. So you come do the activity and go away. The same applies for the exam. Now the exams come at the end of the courses. So there will be a formal timetable release and where you know also when to do the exam. So the exams will be physical, they will not be online. Thank you. So can I have Margaret? Margaret, your hand is up. Margaret, you have a question? Please unmute and ask.
Okay, so been you asking something? So, in other words, uh, the problem we are taking you through is help is supposed to help you uh, transit onto VLE smoothly. However, the process of learning is continuous and relative. So we don't think what we are going to say today is going to be final and you'll not find any hardships. We are here to help you with those hardships as you face them, but we are also here to train you so that those hardships may not seem as uh, Lord Brooks to achieve the purpose of learning online. And, and also if there are suggestions uh, you have as you attend your class, they are, it's, it's very open to suggest to your lecturers how you think uh, they can handle the class depending on how dynamic the class is. Uh, secondly, also the program is continuous and uh, if you feel you've, you lack something, you can come into another schedule because the program is out there. So you look at the program and you see what you miss and whenever it is offered, please get the link and join the class because the classes are free. All you need on your side is data. Yes. So, and also VLE is free. All you need on your side is data, but uh, class, attendance and participation are very key because that is how you score yes and also in vle there are the activity scored your login score because that is attendance your participation and activity scores because that's how interactive you are in class and also if you miss a scheduled exam uh, you may not be able to do it again because the exams or the tests or assignments online are scheduled in time. So we don't expect you to miss. If you're going to miss or you intend to miss or something is stopping you from attending that particular task, you have to let your course leader or your lecturer know in time. Is that clear? You have to let them know in time. Because if you say it later, it will sound as an excuse. So please mind the time, mind the schedule. Uh, and I thank you for being online. So I'm going to pass you back to Cohen. Okay. So I'm told uh, the, the schedule for today is done. And uh, we try to keep this short so that it is also palatable by you. So you can try out several things. And if you feel there is something lacking, please, you can leave the text before you can leave a chat. You just go to your chat and text. Yes. So you type that text and leave it there so that we can respond to it sometime later. So I'm just going to pass back to Cohen to close this session. Uh, thank you for your participation. There is not 12. Eh? I know that no long at all. I don't know why this one is going to The mic is open.